Hello and welcome back to Movies and More with Shivan Pota. I am your host, Shivan Pota, and this is our fifth episode. So, in today's episode, we have a very special guest. We have Mr. Jim Parklin from Ardman Animation Studios. Hello, um, thank you for having me. So, we're just going to jump right into the questions, but before I start, Jim has worked on amazing, amazing stuff, for example, Wallace and Gromit and Shaun the Sheep, to mention a few. So, Jim, what is your favourite movie and why is it your favourite movie? Uh, I think if I was to look at my favourite animated movie, perhaps, um, I think really Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, as a teenager, yeah. watching that when it came out at the cinemas was a real joy to watch and brilliant Tim Burton story, beautiful characters. Um, if I was to think about my favourite Aardman film, I would probably say it have to be Chicken Run, actually. It was my first and the first Aardman feature film, so it's got a special place in my heart of how I started my career with Aardman Animations. So, in recent memory, what's your favourite film in like the last year and a half or so? Live action or animated? Anything. Um, oh, that's a tricky one. I think uh, The Ghost Story, I think, actually. It's a really clever piece of cinema. Yep, the and, whole uh, anthology one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I tried catching that in a festival recently, but sadly they're all sold out. Oh no! It's on my list. Yep. Yeah. So, what's a film you're quite excited for? Any sort of film that's coming out in the next year and a half? I'm. I'll be honest. For someone who works in film, I'm not actually very good at keeping an eye on uh, what's happening. But I do really love. Um, I saw a trailer for the new Hellboy um, remake, which yeah. does look fantastic. So I actually. That would probably be the next thing I um, am waiting for, I think. Yeah, the practical effects used on David Harbour, who plays Hellboy, is absolutely insane. Beautiful, aren't they? I mean, if you can do it with prosthetics and, yeah. and in camera, it just looks so much better, I think, as well. So, what's it like working with such an iconic animation studio like Ardman Animations? Well, working with Ardman was a, a childhood dream, and um, to have achieved it, pretty quickly in my career was was um, a bit of a shock um, but you know 18 years on and I'm still there and I'm still loving it the reason why I come and do this kind of thing so coming and doing outreach and going to schools and festivals and universities is I meet people like yourself and I meet students and I meet uh, and pupils who are just starting off finding a love of film and it's it's good to be re-enthused yeah. about um, why I got into cinema and what I love about animation so it keeps my um, my kind of passion going as well so when you started working for Ardman did you know it would be such a iconic part of animation and sort of film history in general um, well I think you always had a feeling that the first film couldn't really go wrong um, I mean it was Ardman animations it's Wallace and Gromit it's you know all those you know, kind of you know, iconic characters, creature comforts and things like that. So there was a deep love for it within the nation. I thought it would do very well, certainly within Britain and Europe, but how it would do in America was, was really quite unclear at the time. So to yeah. see it boom like it has is kind of is really uh, lovely. Yeah, especially Wallace and Gromit, because it's actually um, sort of inspired so many modern cinema. For example, David O. Russell, who made the film Three Kings, was actually heavily inspired by Wallace and Gromit's, um, I think one of their first outings in Lost Trousers. He yeah. actually said um, in an interview in like a director's roundtable that he thought that the way the rhythm of Lost Trousers was so good that he pretty much copied it in his pretty much one of his first big action films. That's fantastic to hear, actually. And I think really, yeah, Wrong Trousers has that perfect. Um, uh, excuse me a second. <coughs> Wrong Trousers has that perfect action movie combination. It's got a brilliant hero and uh, pairing of Wallace and Gromit. So you've got great characters. You've got the ultimate villain in Feathers McGraw. Yep. Um, you've got an amazing bank heist or museum heist. Um, you've got the betrayal of that friendship. You've then got one of the best chase scenes of all time with the train set. Yeah, and it all, it's well. all it's captured with perfect pace in 27 minutes. So I think, actually, yes, I think it is one of the kind of movie greats, actually. Yeah, even Tarantino, Ridley Scott, um, Alfonso Cuaron, they're all such big fans of just this like simple animation film, but really it's inspiring, to be honest. And there's another question for you. 
is what is the biggest challenge you faced when working in stop motion and sort of sculpting and modeling for stop motion films? Um, I think there are three things we try and avoid in stop motion and those are fire, water and zebras. And so if you've got a zebra on fire, diving into a vast amount of water, then you try and avoid it. And the reason really is water's a problem because how do you immerse a, a stop motion character within a medium of water yeah. or you know, with pirates and adventure with scientists? How do you create these vast seas with characters in it? Um, so we obviously we use digital animation to help us with that. And the fire has an effect on different characters as yeah. well, so it lights them and it's causing different physical effects. And zebras is just because they do what zebras do in the wild and they break up. But sometimes it's the physicality of transforming a character, so transforming the wear of it into Wallace or Wallace oh, into the yeah. wear of it um, needed so many transitions. And that took a year and a half to work out the physical aspects of that to do that. So, you know, and, and that's why it's our most expensive puppet ever made. Wow. So. I've actually tried doing stop motion in the past and it is incredibly time consuming and you have to make sure every single frame is just absolutely perfect or absolutely yeah, yeah. it's but it's you know it takes great patience and it's incredible that like you've been doing it for 18 years well, it's a ridiculous way to make a film really but it is a really enjoyable process and people still have a real a deep love of it so um, yeah that's what kind of keeps you going so other than um, non-stop in, sorry in non-stop motion films what's your favourite animation sort of oh no there's some great ones out there um, some real old classics I'm a big fan of the kind of Fantasias and things like that the kind yeah. of just the joy of animation really and you know the Sorcerer's Apprentice and that kind of thing um, and then you know right up to um, I mean Toy Story is just brilliant yeah. I was just starting university when that came out so that ages me quite significantly but that was quite an inspiration um, in great storytelling and, and Pixar I've had a few slight blips in storytelling but mostly that is where their real charm comes into good storytelling and great characters yeah I can remember have you seen the new Spider-Man film the animation one no no I'm really desperate to watch it but I've been traveling the country and and coming over here as well so I've not had chance just yet to, to watch it but I'm very much looking forward to um, to watching that a real change of medium and, um, and a change of approach to Spider-Man looks absolutely enthralling actually so I've seen it twice it's that good and the wow. animation completely took me by surprise it feels like a comic book was just smashed onto your screen in the best way possible and I actually read that what happened was they pretty much hand drew every frame then went over it in CGI then did a couple more adjustments and then added some sort of filters and different sort of things so it pops and it's just incredible fabulous well then that's definitely worth seeing then I'll, I'll take you up on that offer that's so yep. yeah that's good so do you have any advice for anyone who wants to go into the animation industry slash the film industry I think really there are great film courses out there and certainly within um, within the school here you've got amazing facilities and opportunities to, to make incredible films and um, I think there's no substitute for getting out with a camera be it on your phone or a tablet or with a proper camera and getting out and making it be it animation or live action just learning your craft making mistakes and finding your way I think is the best way to do it there's no substitute for actually getting involved and having a go so um, I think you'll learn so much from that it's not just on the internet you can pick up a lot of good tips on the internet but there's no substitute for yeah. being out in the field and actually making an animation or making a film of your own so how did you get interested with animation and character modeling was it something you always were interested in or you just sort of found it and like this is amazing um, I always loved drawing and kind of playing with plasticine um, and then actually when I discovered through um, a tutor doing out of hours uh, film course actually video art um, which touched on animation um, and then pointed me in the direction and said well look there are actually opportunities for you to study animation as a degree and that's really what blew my mind and thought well why would I do anything else after that and do you think animation especially stop, anima stop motion animation films are poised for a big comeback with the recent releases of stuff like Isle of Dogs Early Man Kubo and the Two Strings Anomalisa all those you know, heavy stop motion films that are real in the box office. Do you think stop motion films will have a huge comeback soon? I think I think they're definitely on the resurgence. Really, you know, especially in the UK, we've got this great pool of talent um, that travels across the world to Laika, 
and to other uh, other companies as well um, across Europe and and into um, into Asia as well. Um, so you know, certainly within the UK, we've we've had Tim Burton makes his feature films with us, his animated features. Wes Anderson is making his animated yeah. features. We've got um, you know another Shaun the Sheep movie coming out, Farmageddon next year. Oh. We're on production of Chicken Run Two. So you know, there's a good catalogue of Ardman films alone, and then what with the new Leica film coming out as well. Yeah, Missing um, Link. Yeah, exactly. So you know, already there's there's a lot happening, and I think. Um, audience still have a passion with it so I think there will be a lot more to come So I think you could, you'd say the next 2-3 years would be great for stop motion fans Absolutely, yeah So you've worked on Shaun the Sheep one of my favourite things as a kid and you've also worked on the show and the film That's so right. were there any stark differences from working on a TV programme to a film? The process of turning Shaun into a feature film really wasn't that much of a leap of the imagination um, Sean is an expensive television programme to make. We produce it at very high production values and costs, so it's cinematic um, in its approach already. So we work to a feature film standard with a TV budget. And I think that's, that's what enables us to sell it worldwide and people can see the quality of it. So really it was more just kind of making sure everything was really tip-top and, and up together. Um, you know, and then expanding that world from Mossy Bottom Farm into the city and now into space. So I have many friends who are big animators and they love animation, so do you have any advice for anyone who wants to get into animation specifically and especially stop motion? Um, I think I'd advise any animator just to, again, as I was saying with previous, kind of get your hands on clay or puppets, find yourself an armature, play and explore it. Um, go to talks and go and see people if somebody's doing a you know, at a festival, somebody's doing a talk on, a, on animation and you're remotely interested in who they are and what they're doing, go along, learn something from what they have to say, say hello to them. People are always, I'm always happy for people to come up and if they're brave enough to say hello and, and ask me questions. Pick people's brains, that's what they're there for really. And, you know, I, I always think that when I come and do this kind of thing, if I can give the opportunity that I would have loved that I didn't have as a student, then, um, then that's a really nice thing to, to be able to pass on. And people I've met at festivals and talks have then gone on to have careers in animation and sometimes they've even worked for them on their projects and that's a real lovely thing to see as well, that legacy. So my last question for you is if you could recommend one film to the audience right now, any film, what would you recommend? Ah, oh, that is tricky. Um, I've got a really deep deep love of Leica's uh, Paranorman. For me it captures that kind of, I'm a big lover of the Goonies and the kind of yeah. 80s films and Paranorman manages to capture what it is to be a kid and what it was to be a kid of the 80s as well um, and it's got the perfect pace of horror movie great characters again, really brilliant humour, beautiful puppets and sets and just really good storytelling and also it's projected by a good friend of mine, Sam Fell as well who's also uh, directing the new Chicken Run movie as well so um, I just think I've got a deep fondness for the people who made it and just good storytelling and in all the characters you've created what is your favourite character? I have to say my favourite characters really are um, the funny animals from Creature Comforts really but I still have a great love for doing Shaun the Sheep and the cast of characters from that as well so it's very hard to, to pick a favourite because they're all kind of your children really yeah so, thanks for coming on the show. Um, thanks for having me. No problem. So, that's all we have time for today. And our next episode, we've already hinted at in there, in this interview. See if you can spot it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>